Hi, everyone. I'm Adriana, joined here again with my grandmother, Caitlin. Welcome back to Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast. We are granddaughter and grandmother joined together to share each of our perspectives on the coming astrology and the energy that is going on in our lives. So I am based in the UK. If you are new here, um, my name is Adriana. I am located in the UK. I've been an intuitive tarot reader uh, for the past almost five years. And now I am an intuitive astrologer and I dive into past lives and galactic astrology and doing this uh, podcast, making these videos on YouTube. My YouTube channel name is Starry Sky Readings. If you are watching from one of the other channels, you can find me there. And I'm Caitlin. And um, I, my mother actually got me into yoga in the 70s, um, 1970 to be exact. And um, that really opened me up. And then also she taught me about astrology um, with uh, Linda Goodman's Sun Signs. So my mother and father were amazing. Um, they really set me on the path. Um, and my parents were way ahead of their time. There's just no doubt about it. Um, so that was a great beginning for me. Uh, then Reiki came along and then now doing the galact uh, astrology in 2018 and then galactic astrology for the last few years and doing this wonderful podcast with you. Yay. So if you have been watching us, uh, please share our videos with anyone you think might enjoy our podcast. And, um, as we always say, Grab a cup of tea or coffee, whatever it is you might be doing. Listen in to what we have to share today. And what we are going to be talking about in this video, we're going to go into Mars and Leo, in particularly with its pre-shadow before Mars retrograde starts in December. So we're going to be talking about that and its opposition with uh, Pluto at this time. So Caitlin, do you want to go ahead and let us know what's happening with Mars. And I want to remind everybody that we do astrology, galactic astrology reports and readings, even do traditional astrology things as well. So please know that if you're finding something interesting in here, you don't really know about and want to know more about it. And if it's in your personal chart, you can contact either one of us. And as Adriana said, our emails are in the description. So we're coming into a... Mars retrograde period, which will be through 2024 to 2025. Um, and we're going to go through many different phases. Um, and the first one we're already in, we've actually been in it since October 4th of this year. And um, this doesn't wind up, the total thing doesn't wind up until May 2nd, 2025. <laughs> So we're in something for a very long haul. Um, but let's first talk about what the pre-shadow phase is. And this really happens due to two, uh, excuse me, three things. I'm getting a little bit quantum here. Relative motion, gradual change, and Mars longer orbit. So Mars retrograde has a long pre-shadow of two months. And if you think of Mercury retrograde, it's nothing compared to Mars. <laughs> It's just a, a couple of weeks, but we're talking two months. And um, this is due to Earth's quicker orbital speed around the sun, which is relative to Mars apparent, saying that apparent slowing down um, is how we will see it from Earth. So remember, retrograde motion is an optical illusion caused by different speeds of Earth and Mars and their orbits that are going around the sun. So as Earth approaches Mars in its orbit, Mars only appears to slow down before seemingly moving backward, um, creating a prolonged pre-shadow period. Also, Mars um, takes significantly longer to orbit the sun than Earth does. Um, and this extends that pre-shadow. And again, none of these, it is not physically moving backward. If that was the case, we'd be in real trouble. So please know that. This is very much an illusion and has a lot more to do with their magnetics and then their physicality ever. So let's talk a little bit about what Mars has been going through. So we're currently in the sign of cancer. 
And I mentioned earlier that October 4th is when it started um, in this long pre-shadow, which will go all the way till December 6, 2024. And that's when it retrogrades. So the watery connection means that the planet action loving Mars has slowed down enough and is getting ready to go into full retrograde on December 6, 2024. And that's when it's uh, going to change into the sign of roaring Leo at six degrees, 11 minutes in the next few weeks. So here we have the planet Mars doing an elemental dance through the watery, emotional, sentimental sign of cancer, and then pirouetting into the fiery, showy, demanding sign of Leo on November 3rd and 4th. So let me give you a little outline of the whole cosmic dance that we're going to go through. Um, and you might, you don't have to take notes. Maybe I could put this in our description so people will have the dates. Um, but it will begin again with the retrograde on December 6th of 2024. And it may make us feel like we're doing the backstroke through orange lava. Why? Because it's going to be in the fiery sign of Leo. Again, it's six degrees, 11 minutes. But then Mars will re-enter sensitive cancer at 17 degrees and one minute on January 6, 2025. So we are diving back into the cooling water element and actually Mars will then turn direct while it's still in the sign of emotional cancer on February 23rd, 2025. Mars will move back into Leo on April 18 and Mars post retrograde shadow will last until May 2nd, 2025. So that's it in a nutshell. So, whoo. Are you all ready for, for this kind of dance? <laughs> well, Adriana and I are here to help chart the course for which we are all about to embark. Okay, so let's look at what's happening during this pre-shadow period, which again, October 4th till December 6th of 2024. So what does Mars and Cancer um, feel like? Okay, so in general, Cancer energies do not like confrontation yet somehow very often end up being in the line of fire. So what we resist persists. Does fear outride our need to express our truth? Our health can suffer when we bury our feelings inside of us, holding any grudges, judgments, or resentments. And that's that good old passive aggressive tendency. Eventually our feelings may explode if we don't bring them into the light and this retrograding Mars in Cancer is going to give us an opportunity to do that, to truly heal. So Mars transit through Cancer gives us, again, that opportunity. But we can start observing the link between our emotions, actions, reactions, and then reflect on, like, how are we, um, as far as needing like everything to be safe and secure because cancer loves safe and secure. What changes do we need to make that could support that, but not, to, not unrealistically because there is no real safe or secure. Let's face it. It really doesn't exist. Change is the constant that is really here in 3D. So cancer needs to learn how to feel safe and secure in the flow of things that happen, that life happens. So that's something to think about in this upcoming retrograde. Um, so the most significant cosmic happening during this pre-shadow will happen on November 3rd when Mars is at 29 degrees of Cancer opposing Pluto, also at 29 degrees of Capricorn before Mars dances into Leo. So the Mars-Pluto opposition can bring what is hidden in the dark into the light. So what are the major conflicts, power struggles, underlying tensions in our life? This alignment may offer us a time of pivotal turning points, as well as a crucial breakthrough. Yet a Mars-Pluto opposition requires our conscious awareness to avoid explosive outcomes. So Adriana... Take us into a deeper dive about Mars um, and all these cosmic happenings coming up. Mars will be going in Leo the Lion, November 3rd or 4th, depending on your time zone, making an opposition to Pluto, lasting till January 6th, this opposition, January 6th, 2025. 
So Mars and Leo the Lion brings a very ambitious and direct energy. With Mars rearing its head with the opposition with Pluto and Capricorn. And remember, this is Pluto's last time in Capricorn. So it's trying to really flesh out everything it needs to get done. All the karmic debts and all that type of stuff. Uh, transformations happening before it moves into Aquarius. So this is, I really feel this is going to be a very impactful um, period here. So this will create a very intense time. Uh, and, you know, the U.S. elections are also <laughs> right before this. Well, this is happening right before the U.S. elections. So Um, mm -hmm. definitely has an influence, of course, even with the rest of the world. And I will talk more a little bit more about that in more mundane terms. So let me share what this looks like. We see this opposition here with Mars and Leo. And I am actually using the United States chart. Normally, I would use the UK chart. But since it is, I think, making something very impactful around the time of the US elections, I felt it made more sense to actually use the United States chart um, Eastern time. And it will be about the same anyways if you're in the UK or other parts of the world, except it'll be November 4th, um, five hours ahead for the UK. Mm -hmm. And making this challenge here with Pluto conjunct Aladfar and Altair, very particularly though with Le with Aladfar, with Lyra, I am going to mention that too. And it has been in there for quite some time. I've talked about it in past videos, but I think it's very significant at this time. Um, so we also saw in that chart that Mars is also making a trine to Mercury and a trine to Neptune, which will be present on November 5th. So it'll be lasting there for a few days. What does this mean exactly? With Mars making the trine to Mercury, there can be a lot of backlash and a flurry of things in the media, including social media, of course, um, and information coming out. Election results, I'm sure, will be part of that, <laughs> no matter which side wins here, right? So either way, there's going to be some sort of that Martian um, intensity happening there with the emotions. And with especially Mars making a trine to Neptune and Pisces, this is increasing that intensity of emotions. Now back to Mars in Leo opposing Pluto and Capricorn. This creates a lot of tension between taking action against government structures and the desire to see changes in systems that have been in place. Because like I mentioned in uh, my last, in our last video, actually talking about Pluto, making its last visit in Capricorn, this pushes the need for change in our societal structure ever since 2008. Mm -hmm. So that push is really there and it's really coming to a head at this time just before it moves into liberating Aquarius energy, okay? So Leo the lion is coming after this, challenging the old systems that have been in place for us. The castle alignment, in our previous video, I also mentioned this castle alignment. It's still here. So it was around Halloween time, actually, and it's still going to be present for this first week um, of November here. This is creating the need for a sense of structure and safety, a new fortress to be built in the spiritual realm, as well as manifested in our physical reality. So how cool is that? You know, this type of stuff showing up here. These things are are intense, I know. <laughs> it sounds very intense and a little chaotic, uh, but this goes back ancestrally, as Caitlin will actually mention in our next video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, this goes back to even World War II. She finds a really great parallel, so please stick around and look out for that video, and even beyond our civilization here. And I'm talking out in our star connections, right? So, you know, we talk about star seeds here as well with galactic astrology. It's no wonder Pluto has been conjunct a lad far, which is in the Lyra constellation. So I think of all the channelers, such as uh, Lisa Royal Halt, who have picked up on the story of the Lyran Wars. And how interesting is it that this other civilization said to be 
feline-like and comes into play with the connection to Mars and Leo. So I don't believe in coincidences. So I right. think things happen for a reason. Yeah, Many of us who have souls connected to Lyra, like myself and Caitlin, actually, personally, we both have our sun connections there. Uh, we we tend to feel those wounds and the past trauma from this past life coming back up again, whether with you with the U.S., as well as the other conflicts in the world, unfortunately. For those who don't know the channeled information on Lyra, it was a great battle between uh, two different groups, one of whom invaded and overpowered the other, so overpowered uh, the Lyrans, and has sent many Lyrans to flee for refuge or even lost in battle. I've had actually a few past life readings uh, with other fellow Lyran star seeds who have definitely felt this connection there and is there they are working out those past life traumas and healing those things and finding that sense of safety and security like that castle right that fortress for yourself mm -hmm. that protection mm -hmm. and we're here on earth now to heal this theme that continues to come up throughout generations we we have to get to a point where we can heal this. And like I said, we will talk a little bit more about that with what Caitlin shares in our next video. So with all these alignments considered, I personally would advise to act cautiously. Um, I really wouldn't take any hasty action, whether it be, you know, protests or even, you know, trying to avoid arguments with other people because the, <laughs> the energy is very um, heightened for that type of thing to happen. Think back to the castle alignment and creating your own sense of safety. And I even think of a fantasy novel or a movie where you have to seek uh, shelter in your castle while a battle plays out in the foreground. And remember that this is not the cowardly lion by doing this, okay? So you don't have to take part in the drama or chaos. You can choose not to. Remember the big picture. I think that is key. Remember the big picture that this is all created to create separation, polarity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it takes true strength, I feel, to know that not all violence or aggression must be met with more violence and aggression, unless, of course, absolutely necessary, um, you know, if you have to defend yourself. But I digress. So especially with Jupiter retrograde. I made a video on Jupiter retrograde, if you would like to check that out. It is sextiling Chiron. Um, so we should focus our attention on healing our inner wounds and being introspective these next few months. So especially going into December, I feel this is going to be a great time for things to slow down. These very intense energies we're feeling through November, they will come to a simmer as we go into December, I feel. So face your triggers and ask yourself, why does this make you feel the way you feel? I really feel if we are to heal as a collective, we must first go within the safety of our inner castle walls and do the healing work. Healing internally so we can collectively and externally heal throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Instead of acting out our triggers and emotions, which only creates more chaos and division. I feel this will be a very telling time for all of us, depending on the actions we choose to take, as it will affect the next year for us. So let's focus on healing on an individual level with unity, keeping that concept of unity in mind, okay? And my hope is this will elevate us enough to avoid any more sort of conflicts going forward. I would like to make a little comment um, being that I'm in the U S and it's, what's fascinating to me is so many people that we know are voting early, which I thought that's very interesting. Um, more people than ever before, at least within our um, circle of friends and family. And um, I just thought that was interesting. So maybe sub unconsciously, subconsciously to avoid a lot of what's going to be happening around that time. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind point. of interesting. I, I just like, yeah. I mean, like pretty much everybody that I know, um, mm -hmm. to be honest. So I, I'm wondering if other people are noticing that as well. Anyway, when you brought up about the Lyran Draco Wars, 
um, I wanted to speak a little bit to that. Um, and that is also connected, I feel, and lived out in Atlantis and Egypt as well. So yes. we've had many go arounds. And I do feel the current times that we are in are related to all three uh, connections. So I just wanted to to share that. And I and I love what you shared and agree with everything. So. so I will share my tarot message now. So I've pulled a tarot card based on this energy, um, specifically around that first week of November. And the fool has come out here. So this is, again, mm. I'm using my cat tarot. Mm. And here's the fool. The fool's mm. journey. This has been a journey, <laughs> right? Mm. Since... 2008 you know thinking of Pluto and Capricorn and now we got Mars coming in here to really um poke at Pluto here with all the karmic stuff happening so yes think about the journey that you have been on as an individual yourself think about how far you have come so think about it I think on an individual level and really reflect and what a great time to reflect as we also have the hermit card and perfect synchronicity here, going inwards, having introspection, like Jupiter retrograde also happening at the same time as Mars retrograde. So we got both of those very inward, um, simmering down energies happening that we're going to be seeing after November. So I do, I really do feel that and really hope <laughs> things will um, down to a more simmer, just feeling more low energy. So yes, take that as a blessing to have that downtime for yourself and take care of yourself going within. Makes total sense. Really, very apropos. Mm -hmm. So it's as if that there wasn't enough going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see another connection with uh, the Andromeda constellation yeah. as well. And it's coming on that third and fourth, depending on where you live in, in the world, uh, mm -hmm. Mars and Leo at zero degrees is squaring the fixed star Mirac in the Andromeda constellation at zero degrees, 45 minutes. So it's a pretty close uh, orbital connection there. Mm -hmm. So this square may present a challenge of connecting with your spiritual self. So forewarned is forearmed. Okay, so maybe making more time for meditation, making more time to contact your spiritual and highest self would be awesome around that date, uh, third and fourth. Um, but it's also a good time to call on your Andromeda star brothers and sisters. So these beautiful Mirac star beings carry the Andromedan quali qualities of unity, harmony, and love. How wonderful is that? So they are here to expand awareness, inspire spiritual development, and awaken humanity to what is truth. And the truth is that we are all connected. And it makes me think of the beautiful Lakota prayer, Aho Metaka Uwasim, which translates as all our relations, that we are all connected. Uh, our elemental beings are connected to us, around us. Uh, nature all around us, um, are the animal kingdom. I mean, we are all interconnected. And then we have these beautiful angelic beings connecting with us. So there's nothing that is not connected. How could it be not connected? So that's something to think about. And, and I also pulled a card. And actually, when we were working on our scripts, um, this came up and I still felt, my goodness, it was, it's so apropos. And it comes from Lissera Holt's Galactic Heritage Cards, a wonderful set um, right here. Mm -hmm. And so many, what is there, like 108, like a huge amount in here. And uh, so out of that whole amount, I got the number one card. How interesting is that? <laughs> and it's the Founders card and it's called Beyond Wisdom. This card is actually inviting us to remember our wholeness, our unity, our group consciousness, at the same time as embracing what individuates us, which brings in the balance. So it's reminding us of our true nature, like a great hologram of creation that contains all things and potentials. 
one being throughout all creation, manifesting as both separate and unified at the same time. So the message this card brings is like being a lotus blossom growing in a mud puddle. And to never get distracted by the chaos or intensity of life itself. To keep growing toward the source of all that is. Trust source. This connection, when you trust source, this connection can go beyond wisdom. You go into, to me, uh, what's called bhakti, which is unconditional love. And to me, that is the only truth. All of this, everything else is an illusion. Okay, so yes, are we connected to an illusion? Yes, we're in Maya, we're in the illusion. And yet we are all interconnected within this dream that source is dreaming. And, um, you know, yet we have the ability to uh, become awake and to master our dream within the dream of source. So there's something very important with that being said. And it correlates with everything that uh, Adriana and I have just shared. Yes, thank you so much for all joining us in this podcast today. Please do like this video. Comment down below how you are all feeling with all these crazy energies going on. And let us know how you are getting through it. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>